Hello, everybody. Welcome to Fruitful Trees. You know, I'm here in South Florida, and everyone hears Florida, and they think, wow, Florida is the flattest state in the country. It is just flat here. Well, it's actually not flat here. And when you hear that, some people might say, well, maybe in North Florida, it's a little hill, hilly or a little cut mountains. But no, I'm in South Florida, and there's a hill or a ridge, it's called, that goes all the way from Miami all the way up to Central Florida. And it is... Uh, something a lot of people don't know about unless you're an old timer and in the old days the people knew hundreds of years ago 100 years ago maybe they knew the advantage of planting high up on this ridge and so now it's just built up but you can still see where this ridge is and i was with alex from tropical acres who told me about this ridge and he said let's go and explore some of the old trees that the old time has planted the old mango trees we even found an avocado tree that's planted on top of this ridge so these are an elevation much higher than the average fruit tree out here. And you can see the fruit for it. It's mango season. We have a bunch of baby mangoes in the trees now here. But on the top of the ridge, they're a little bit bigger. Same thing with the avocados. The avocado season's almost over, but at the top of the ridge is still there. And you could do some uh, research and find out where exactly this ridge is, where it begins. There are some fruit farms. Uh, I know at least two mango farms, including Alex's Tropical Lake, is that a on part of the ridge but we're going to see here today alex is going to walk us around some of the old areas of west palm beach florida and some other places and we're going to see some of the older trees that people planted in the ridge area so check it out all right here we are in west palm beach on parker avenue this is the same street that tropical acres farms is off and there's alex uh, so tell us about what we're doing here okay so Today we're going to be talking about a natural feature that occurs in our area of Palm Beach County, Florida that is very different from what people associate geographically with South Florida, Southeast Florida in particular. So um, what we're going to be talking about today is what we locally call the Sand Ridge, but I think properly is I think referred to as the Atlantic Ridge. So an area where Florida is not so flat. Um, so in places like Miami, for example, is about six and a half feet above sea level or so. Fort Lauderdale is around 10. So pretty low. Um, but what people don't realize is there's sections here along the coastline that are several times that above sea level. And it provides a very unique environment for mango trees in particular. So we'll talk about that and uh, in a couple different locations we're going to visit today in this video to kind of um, describe and show and display what this ridge looks like and what impact it has on growing mango trees in southeast Florida. And at the peak of this ridge, how high above sea level is it? I believe more than 50 feet. So significant by Florida standards, not significant by the rest of the country, but um, surprisingly higher than what most people think is in South Florida. And uh, there's a tree here, right? That so, right there. Oh, over there. Oh, there it is. Okay. Well, look at that tree. There's, that tree's loaded with avocados. Yeah. That tree fruits every year. I think it's a Monroe. But um, anyway, let's walk over here to the other side. Of the so this is really old house, old area. Yeah, you very can see old, the old area architecture. of West Palm Beach. A lot of these houses were built in the uh, 1920s. Or even some of them older than that. So this here is uh, an example. This is going downhill. You really can't tell, but if you were on a skateboard, you'd know. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. actually, the peak of the ridge uh, is back over this way. So at least the peak of the ridge uh, in our little part of West Palm Beach. Um, well, this is debatable. Actually, we'll go to another section in a little bit, and we'll look at. Uh, over here, just uh, south of Summit Boulevard, there's an area that's probably a little higher. And your farm is on the beach, Yeah, right? so we're on the ridge. So we're on the western facing side of it. Um, and there's several other farms that are on this ridge. Uh, to our south is Truly Tropical in Del Rey, Chris Wenzel's place, Walter Zill uh, in Boynton Beach, and uh, Hatcher and, of course, Cecil Brumfield, my friend, in uh, Lantana. There's the old Garnett Orchard, which we'll try to take a look at later, that's now property of the Solid Waste Authority along High Ridge Road, is also part of that ridge. 
So several uh, either existing or former mango farms are on this uh, sand ridge here. Now, do you notice the mangoes on your farm that grow on the higher part do better? I can't say that for sure. Um, I know that probably at our peak, we're about 25 feet above sea level. So uh, we can take a look here and get a figure on how high up we are on this, this particular section. Of this. Okay, so there's a tree right there. Yeah. Uh, you were saying the mangoes do better on the trees that are higher on the ridge, and uh, there seems to be a good amount of Yeah, so you can see this, on this tree over here uh, has large, mature, almost mature mangoes on it. And so, uh, so basically, there's a habit of, of certain mango trees over in this section of the county to fruit very early, uh, they'll often send up off-season bloom, actually. And so we have mangoes in our trees at the farm over here that have mature fruit on them already, or fruit that is near maturity, and here we are in the first week of March. So, uh, but this happens in other sections of the ridge in a, at a rate that it does not happen in other parts of South Florida or Florida in general. So it's just an interesting quirk with mango trees that are growing in this section. So, um, Paul, you can probably zoom in on that fruit there. Yeah, this fruit on the tree there. And this tree has a habit of doing this every year. I, it's actually a seedling mango. I've tried it before. It's actually not that great, but um, it's an old tree. You can tell it's been pruned back a number of times. And there's trees further down uh, here on Parker Avenue, as you get close to Forest Hill, that I've seen have fruit in the fall or winter, um, but certainly in the spring is not uncommon. So yeah, there's full size mangoes on there. Like yeah. That. So and that's just a random seedling. So yes. it's not a, not a grafted tree as far as I can tell. Yeah. So um, and we'll take a look over here uh, on Summit and show just some of the landscape here. Uh, so this Summit Boulevard over here, this is uh, the intersection of Summit and Parker. So a long time ago, and they still to this day, this area of the ridge is referred to as the Parker Ridge. And I don't know who Parker was, uh, somebody that lived in this area a very long time ago, over a hundred years ago, I think. But I don't know much about him. Anyway. Here on Summit, if we walk over this way, this may be the peak of the ridge over here. I'm not sure, but as I point this direction, you can see the uh, slope upward. Very old houses here too. Yeah, old houses. So this section is residential, but we'll look in a little while. Uh, area that's virgin, downtown West Palm Beach. Um, these uh, these homes are high enough that some of the houses on this ridge actually have basements, which is a very unusual feature in Florida. Um, but they're they're elevated enough that. Uh, they won't flood with water um, when we get a lot of rain. So here you can kind of get a pretty good view. And uh, you can see it slopes a little upward over towards where that banyan tree is there. So let's see if we're better I'm not sure how accurate it is, but let's see how high we are here. 50 feet is what the elevation says. 50 feet on, uh, well, okay, I'll take that back. It says 30 feet. <laughs> 30 feet. But whatever. Uh, like I said, Miami's at six and a half feet average sea level, above sea level. So here we are, um, many times that figure. So, uh, mango tree right there. yeah, mango trees are so common in this section of Palm Beach County. They're almost like weeds here. They're in all kinds of yards where people never take care of them or do anything to them, and they thrive pretty well in this section so uh yeah so we'll keep going and we'll check out some other spots there's a tamarind tree there look at all the tamarind in that Where? tree the big one no no this look at all the tamarind tree yeah yeah 
Wow. Check out some of these huge old mango trees. I yeah. think some of them are Moldovas from way back in the day. Okay, so right now we are in downtown West Palm Beach, Florida. Um, the water is literally probably a few hundred yards that direction, or at least uh, less than a mile that direction, we'll say. Um, and so we're a little bit north of our farm, uh, which is uh, about five minutes south of the downtown area. But the ridge that I've been talking about, the sand ridge, uh, extends up north through the, the downtown area itself in West Palm Beach, and actually goes even further than that. It goes all the way past, north past Jupiter, uh, into the southern end of Martin County. So um, it's pretty long, but it's got interruptions, peaks and valleys, if you will, for lack of a better term, in between. So this is uh, one of the more elevated parts. As you can see, the land slopes up this direction um, and uh, down that way. Here's a mango tree right here. Uh, this tree is setting its fruit or has already set its fruit. And it's doing pretty well. You can see it got some powdery mildew here but it set fruit through the powdery mildew. Now what identity this tree is, uh, I'd have to see once uh, the fruit are a little more mature. I've never looked at this tree up close, but around here there's a lot of very large old mango trees, uh, and a few of them are probably Mulgobas, because it was the first mango that was successfully introduced from India a very long time ago, over 100 years ago, over 120 years ago, and they were first grown in West Palm Beach near the downtown area, a little further north of here. So there's still some of these really ancient old Mulgoba mango trees uh, in the area of downtown West Palm. So right now we can feel this nice sea breeze, uh, even though it's a hot day here uh, in early March. This breeze is very common here, and um, it's especially prevalent here over at the top of this ridge. And it's really important for providing the mango trees over here with a little bit of a drier microclimate compared to a little further west of here. So this ridge that we're standing on, not only is it a little elevated and exposed to this sea breeze, but also there's a deep sand underneath us here. Um, and so this kind of white colored sand that they call sugar sand is actually really optimal for growing mangoes. And it's terrible for a lot of other crops, but mangoes seem to thrive in it. And it's very, very deep here. You know, it's, it's many meters deep. And uh, it's like this um, for most of this section of the county. If you go up to Juno Beach, uh, in that section, there's a lot of uh, kind of a natural scrub area. And uh, as you get north of Palm Beach Gardens, the, the ridge kind of starts to climb up again and it occurs uh, along that area near the Intracoastal Waterway uh, in Jupiter as you go up US-1 towards uh, Hope Sound and Stewart. So uh, it can get, I think, even higher over there perhaps than where we're standing right now. Um, so because of this kind of drier condition uh, and uh, good quality sand for mangoes here, we don't see a lot of uh, standing water we don't see as much humidity as out west, so there's a lot less anthracnose here on mango trees, and if they can make it through the powdery mildew, which is still an issue here, they can fruit uh, quite well. So this tree's probably gonna have a pretty good crop, uh, even though nobody is doing anything to this tree other than throwing plastic bags in it, apparently. <laughs> that had to have been brought there by the wind, but. Um, so no nutrition, no anything, just an old tree growing in this sand ridge here um, you know, without any assistance. And it's a really common sight over here. So, um, some bigger fruit over now, right on this tree over there. Ah, yeah. Okay. So this botanical obviously came out a little earlier. And, uh, it might be, uh, a turpentine mango. We'll know more when it, when the fruit expands a bit more. But a trunk this size is a pretty old tree. How old do you say it is? 
Oh, this tree is probably over 60 years old, I would imagine. So it could be considerably older than that. Anyway, the breeze feels pretty good. So, um, so in this downtown area, if you were to go visit downtown West Palm Beach through these side streets, um, like Avernia, Datura, Clematis, uh, is the kind of heart of the downtown area. But as you get uh, a little further away from Clematis Street and on these other side streets is where you see these big old mango trees um, that are always doing so well here, it seems. Almost every time I've ever come here, uh, any mango season, they always seem to be full of fruit. So. Was this, is this a named tree? So this is most likely not a seedling and probably a grafted tree? No, no, no. I'm, I'm going to say this is probably a seedling tree. And there's definitely seedlings and there's definitely grafts over here. So you'll find like old Hayden trees here, uh, especially as you get closer to Northwood, which is just north of here, um, uh, north of the downtown area. Um, but there's also old Mulgobas, there's old Kent trees I've seen here. Um, so there's some grafted stuff mixed in with some seedling stuff. And some places uh, down in Del Rey, I see trees this big, but there are other trees pretty close together in yeah. a row. You know, and here, this one's just a single So Delray is part of the same ridge here. Um, so if you come here and you're from another part of Florida or just another place entirely, there are a lot of mango trees per capita, you know, uh, per square mile, if you will, in this area because they do so well. And uh, whether you go to coastal Delray, Boynton, um, Lake Worth, um, you know, West Palm, Juno Beach, um, it's, uh, it's pretty populated with large old mango trees in a lot of the yards. Yeah, and if you took a, a skateboard and you sat at the top over there, you could just ride it right there. Yeah, absolutely. It would go pretty well. Yeah. It keeps going right down. Yeah, so, which is interesting because the water is that way. So you would think it would go down into the water, but it's come up from the water and then going right. back down. Well, it does go uh, down towards the water. Yeah. If we were to walk up further this way, it does slope that direction. So uh, as you get closer to, um, uh, to uh, what's the name of this street over here, Quadril, uh, is where it kind of starts to slope back down towards the water, towards the intracoastal. So this way it kind of slopes towards Tamarind Avenue um, or Parker uh, as we go further that way, Tamarind turns into Parker, so, which is the road that our farm is off of. Wow, very interesting. Nice. Here we are across the street from the last place we were at. Here's the sand he was talking about. Yeah, this is the sand. It's like beach sand. Yeah, it's not beach. beach sand. Beach sand is like a, uh, a coarser sand. This is uh, what we call sugar sand. And it's usually, as we, if you go a little deeper, you can see how white it is. But um, this sand here, uh, it's, uh, it's got actually a pretty acidic pH. Uh, it's usually where we are, it's about six. We would need like a soil test kit to see what the pH is right here. But um, the good thing about that uh, pH is that it's easier for the mangoes to uptake whatever micronutrients might be present in the soil if it was more alkaline, like the soils that are found in Miami-Dade County or Western Broward. Uh, in other parts of Florida, the mango trees on their own would develop more micronutrient deficiencies more frequently, most likely, um, as is the case uh, when you visit those places. So even though it, it doesn't seem particularly rich in nutrients, uh, the pH helps a lot. The fact that it's a pH, uh, you know, in the acidic range uh, below seven. So, and uh, okay, so let's look at this tree here. Oh, that's a big tree. Wow. And you can see all the little fruit it's setting. This tree also got hit with powdery mildew, but it didn't matter. It set right through it. So this tree is pretty old. It's got a wider trunk than the one that we were just standing by. In fact, you can see where some of the limbs have been probably shorn off by hurricanes over the years. Wow. 
uh, you can see this one hasn't set fruit as well, but it has set fruit. So this is a different variety than the tree that's growing, you know, 30 something feet that way. Wow, this is a monster tree, it's so big. Yeah, this one's pretty big. You can see some of the fruit that's set up there. And over in this little uh, lot here, there's these trees here. These are probably turpentines here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of them probably over there in the corner there. Over there beyond that is the Brightline Station, beyond this uh, white building you see here. Fern Street over here. All the streets over here are named after plants. Oh, so wow. uh, you got fern, you've got banyan, uh, datura, avernia, clematis. Uh, those are all different plants. This is a much smaller tree here. Yeah, this is a seedling. And actually, it still has open flowers on it. You can see the Female flowers are more towards the top on this one, which is common. There's another tree here. This one's set very well. Check that out, Paul, if you can zoom in. Wow. Really good fruit set on this old tree. So this is all over South Florida, wild trees like this. But this particular area, this we're right on this ridge, actually. Yeah, it's the like top the it. best place to probably grow a mango tree. Ironically enough, even though we're surrounded by concrete here, yeah. um, there's probably very few places better than this. This where this we're like standing. This looks like the peak right, right here. Yeah, or one of the you know one of the peaks. Like from where we are right now, it goes down on both sides. Yeah. See everybody there. You see that slope there. This is Avernia Street here. Avernia Street. The slope there. That's a big banyan tree, and then on this side, that's where we came from. The slope that way. And this goes all the way up to Jupiter. It goes past Jupiter, it goes all the way actually up to the southern part of Martin County. Wow. And a long time ago they planted mango trees there too. And some of those very old trees can be found in a neighborhood there near Gomez uh, and Dixie called uh, the Orchards. Now, do you think in the old days they knew this and that's why they yes, planted they up knew here? That, yes, they, they recognized early on that this was good mango growing territory. The area out west, they called it the flatwoods back then, and mangoes weren't considered to do very well out there. So, And what about other fruit trees in this area? Um, actually, most fruit trees do pretty well. Um, as we saw, the avocado and the, uh, the tamarinds. And, um, you know, this area almost never freezes, so tropical fruits... Uh, do pretty well and you can see some big old ones in this section of the county. You also see some pretty big old bands of trees. Yeah. So. So many trees in these old lots. Yeah, it's a really remarkable. Look, there's a mango tucked in between these apartments. Wow. Here. small tree perfect here is big tree. yeah the perfect size wow can you any idea what it might be no uh, I'm not sure but we'll know once the fruit are a little more mature you can see it's oh wow there. yeah it's probably a turpentine that looks like a turpentine fruit to me. 
Yeah. So, a seedling, random seedling turpentine, I think. Somebody was enjoying mangoes here and threw yeah, some down. Yeah, an animal, <laughs> you know. Wow, that is a big mango tree. Wow. How tall would you say that is? This is one of these trees that might be a Mulgoba. I'll have to take a look at the fruit once it's a little further along. I'm not certain. I know there are some Mulgoba trees in here. You can see it got hit the powdery mildew pretty hard, but it's still set a decent amount of fruit there. Do you have Mulgoba trees on your property? Yeah, we've got uh, a couple of them. One really, the other one. How's the fruit? Outstanding. Really? Yeah. So look how big this tree is. Just an absolutely massive chunk. I don't know what kind of diameter we're looking at here, but this is an ancient tree, well over 100 years old. It wouldn't surprise me if this is something that was planted around 1900 or so. Maybe even before then. So, but I think it's really cool to see this big old tree. So close to all these huge buildings, well, this is huge buildings, like, you know, office buildings and apartments and condos and stuff like that. So, right across the street from my chair is the tri rail station. That's Cameron, so that's West Public's tri rail station. As you can see, the old building is kind of like a little bit of that old Spanish style uh, architecture going on there. Right next to this big old tree is the Lots of little mangoes. These are a lot further along up here. So that's from an earlier bloom. Yeah. Wow, I wonder during the season if people just come here and Enjoy the mangoes. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I mean, uh, you know, it's in the public domain here. This is a public sidewalk, and anybody can just help themselves. If you go up to Quadrill, there's a bunch of trees along just in between kind of uh, City Place and um, and this other part of downtown over here. Uh, right around railroad tracks, there's some big trees like this, and they're just totally kind of in the public domain. If the problem know. is people probably pick it so so early because oh they yeah see that happens make... a lot people see that like to eat them green will pick them before they're even mature but even then you'll end up finding ripe ones in the trees and stuff like that too so. and on the ground. Just in that area over here, and yeah. you'll find this from here all the way up to. So you see, it, it climbs up there a little bit, but actually over here along Tamarind, it actually goes back up again, yeah. a little bit. So. Okay, so we're continuing our tour of the Sand Ridge here in Palm Beach County, and right now we're standing over in front of the High Ridge Scrub Natural Area. So this is kind of a little natural preserve uh, that kind of shows you what this ridge used to look like a hundred plus years ago before this area got developed. 
for commercial and residential real estate. So we'll walk over here. Um, so this area here is just south of Hypoluxo Road in the Lantana section. And you can see how the land kind of slopes uh, over uh, down towards that way. But this is all still part of the ridge. So you see all these old pine trees. Uh, you see uh, saw palmetto and uh, a lot of other native plants and fauna can be found in this section. There, Paul, look, you can see the uh, white sand, okay, the sugar sand that this ridge is made up of. So at one time, this is pretty much what all of uh, the ridge used to look like ages and ages ago before it uh, was turned into homes. Uh, fortunately, this little section here is preserved, so it's not going to be developed. Uh, at least hopefully not going to be developed anytime soon. Uh, but it's kind of neat to see. This is uh, public access, so you can come here and uh, walk through this preserve and, and see kind of uh, what old Florida used to look like a long time ago. No mango trees in here. No, Well, there might be uh, random seedlings somewhere in here. I'm not saying there's not, but no uh, intentional plantings in here. Now, mangoes, of course, would thrive in this spot. So, you know, uh, but uh, this area is uh, just kind of uh, a glimpse of what things used to look like a very long time ago. And as you go further south, I think there's some still some preserve area down there as well. So, uh, in fact, if you look at the sign here, seed collection is prohibited here. So you're not allowed to uh, take seeds from the palm trees here. That's a apparently been an issue, so they put up signs to discourage that. But anyway, um, so here we are. We're just a little bit south of the um, area where Hatcher, uh, Cecil Brumfield, and the old Garnett Orchard, which is now the SWA's transfer facility, just a little bit further up the road here on this section of the ridge, uh, which is on the west side of I-95, where we are earlier uh, at our farm, and over at uh, the downtown area, we're actually east of I-95. So this is where it's kind of elevated on the little bit on the west side. Now, is it I-95 that doesn't go along with the coast, or does the coast go different along from the ridge? Well, I-95 kind of stretches out westward as you get uh, a little bit north, um, north of West Palm, like as you're going maybe towards Palm Beach Gardens, uh, Jupiter area. I-95 veers further west from the water than it is over here uh, in this southern section of the county. Um, so this ridge uh, is kind of on both sides of I-95 and like I said it's not constant so it's intermittent. There's peaks and valleys to it um, and uh, if you go a little further that way uh, towards uh, Gateway you'll see uh, the same effect in terms of there being kind of peaks and valleys over there. So in no way is uh, this area of Florida flat because you got this no, ridge not going at all. a long way. No, definitely not flat land here. Very well draining soil here. Um, and uh, people knew that a hundred plus years ago. And actually a lot of people preferred to, um, you know, put their houses and uh, residences on the ridge because they wouldn't flood. So. So uh, just a neat little preserve here that uh, anybody that's interested can come and check out. We'll show the sign up here. It says uh, High Ridge Scrub Natural Area. It's visible from High Ridge Road. So there's the sign there, High Ridge Scrub Natural Area. And over here you can see a pretty good look at the soil on this path here. It's been cleared along the perimeter. Yeah, the white sand. Yeah, the white sugar sand. On the other side, of course, is residences. A lot of these homes over here have pretty large lots in this section of the ridge. So a lot of these are like one plus acres in size, which of course is becoming increasingly hard to find in this section of the county. But along High Ridge Road here in Lantana, there's a lot of big lots. Uh, if it were me living there, there'd be a lot of mango trees in the yard for sure. So. Um, and you can find them in people's yards around here. We're driving up High Ridge Road here in the Lantana area, just south of Hypoluxa Road.
examining the sand ridge here. So up over here, past this gas station, is the Hatcher Mango Orchard, which has been there since I think probably the 30s. And there's Cecil's. And there's Cecil's place, right here on the corner of Hypoluxo and High Ridge Road. So that's Lawrence Zill's old house. Lawrence Zill lived there um, back in the 80s and 90s. And so those are his old trees. Cecil is going to be selling this property, or actually already has sold it, I guess. I'm not sure. Um, so now we're going to head up to the peak of the ridge in this little section. And as we go up here, I believe some of the houses here are over 50 feet above sea level. There's mango trees in the yards. A lot of them. Some of these homes along High Ridge Road here do have basements. I remember Cecil telling me once that he looked at a house when he was looking for homes in this area that had one. We're getting near the peak here as we drive up. Right around here, I think. Way out in this direction is Lake Osborne. Here's a good view of how the, uh, the land slopes downward. This road is called Hillside. You see this property here has a bunch of old mango trees in it. They're planted in orchard formation. So right where we're getting to now is the section where there used to be an orchard that was owned by the Garnett family. Back in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, they used to grow citrus as well as mangoes and probably some other fruit tree species too. So as we drive by here on the right side of the road, on the east side of High Ridge Road, is the SWA's transfer station. There are still several hundred mango trees on this property, but it used to belong to the Garnett family a long time ago. You can kind of peer in there and see these trees are planted in orchard formation and they're pretty old. Most of them, I've been inside of it, most of them are Kent's, Brooks, Haydens, and Zills, but there are some other mangoes in there that I would need to go in and see to identify them. Some of them are probably seedling trees, but Haydens, Zills, Brooks, and Kent's occupy most of the trees in there. So now we're getting close to Lantana Road here, and this is a point where the ridge has declined, and uh, it's more of a, a lower elevation. Okay, so here we are. Now we're north of Lake Worth Road. We're in Lake Worth now. No longer in Lantana. Now this is just a residential area here along A Street, but lots of mangoes, of course. A lot of them near the sidewalks or in people's yards. M Street has tons of mangoes. Yeah, there's a couple there in that yard right there, and some big ones, oops, in the back. Look how old these houses are. Wow. Yeah. So look, there's the, the features of the ridge. You can see the inclines. Here we are coming up on a little hill here. And yeah, there's a mango tree with some small developing fruit on it. Another one. That's full of fruit. Look at these big trees here. Wow. Three of them. Big ones in this front yard here. Wow. Quaker meetings. Yeah, I guess wow. the Quakers meet there and they can get mangoes too. There's one of those old Spanish style homes. More of these mangoes right up against the sidewalk here. Sometimes these sidewalks get littered with fruit. It's fairly steep here. 
Here we are approaching 10th Avenue. So there's an old home there. Here, Paul, just turn right over here. I-95 is over here. So as you exit off of I-95 on the 10th, you're still very much on the ridge, yeah. So there's some mangoes along the sidewalk here, but as we turn right, you'll see a few that are right onto the uh, public access. And we're going to go down the slope here. Take a look at this mango right here on the uh it's got some fairly developed fruit yeah here we are on 10th avenue and f street and there's a nice mango tree here all right so we're on 10th avenue and f street in lake worth you can tell we're in Lake Worth. Yeah, you can tell we're in Lake Worth. Here as the sun starts to set. Check out all the fruit on this guy. This is growing right up against the sidewalk here. Any idea what this might be? It's a turpentine, I'm almost 100% sure. Now, there's, as you go across the railroad tracks here, there's also a, a number of them along the sidewalk as well. But almost every yard over here on these letter streets in Lake Worth has mango trees in them. And uh, this is what they do here. They just make lots of fruit. So some of you that are in areas that aren't as ideal or optimal for mangoes uh, know the pain of trying to grow mangoes under circumstances that aren't so terrific. Over here, uh, people don't have to do anything to them. They just make tons of Now, is it because we're on the ridge or just because... Yeah, just... well, I mean, this area, it's so dry compared when you go just a few miles this direction over past I-95. The soil is so good for mango. Um, you know, anthracnose is just kind of a non-issue here. And the trees just seem to flower pretty readily here. Uh, they just like this environment, so. Uh, how far would you say these are from fruiting? These fruit are gonna be ready in less than two months. I'm gonna say, so probably like in May. All right, everybody, that was me with Alex from Tropical Acres Farms. I'm gonna put his website below. If you want to get a, a mango tree or taste some amazing mangoes this year, they have 300 varieties there at Tropical Acres Farms. And mango season is starting soon, depending when you're watching this. So make sure you get there this summer and taste some of these amazing mangoes. And when you go to Tropical Acres Farms, look out for the ridge or ask Alex, say, hey, where's that ridge that in the video you did with Paul, I, you know, I know you said your farm was on it. And if you're in the West Palm Beach area or so on, just look for the ground that goes up and then down towards the towards the coast it's pretty cool i never knew that until alex mentioned it to me but then i'm like oh yeah it gets pretty high up i think he said sometimes up to 50 feet high so that's like not just a little hill that's pretty big especially for south florida all right put your comments and questions below uh what you thought of this video if you liked it i liked uh exploring with alex some of the old trees and having explained some of them until then, everybody, thank you for subscribing so much. Please share these videos. If you like them, give a thumbs up. Until then, everybody, have a great day and keep growing.